amici di Comics Reporter e Fumetto Mania, oggi per l'anniversario del Ritorno del Cavaliere Oscuro abbiamo un ospite che non ha bisogno di presentazione, inchiostratore, disegnatore, scrittore insegnante alla School of Visual Arts of New York, abbiamo con noi oggi Mr. Klaus Johnson. Welcome! Thank you, thank you so much. La prima domanda appunto riguarda il capolavoro eh, The Dark Knight Return. Ricorrono quest'anno i 35 anni di Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Tu e Miller eravate consci del fatto che sarebbe diventata una storia che avrebbe segnato un punto fermo nella definizione del personaggio di Batman, un vero capolavoro a livello globale? Um... You know, I don't think anyone uh, expected Dark Knight Returns to last for 35 years. And so it was a surprise to me. I think it's a surprise to Frank. And I know it was a surprise to DC Comics. Uh, but I think all of us are very, very uh, impressed and very happy that uh, the public and the fans like it as much as they do. And uh, personally, I'm very grateful. It's, you know, it made a, a big difference in my career. And I think it made a big difference in uh, Frank's career also, obviously. Perfetto, andiamo avanti con le domande, questa volta che ci vengono poste dal pubblico. Cominciamo con la domanda che ci fa Timothy eh, Witowicz. Dice, come ti è venuta in mente come hai realizzato la scena del sogno in Batman Gothic? Um, well, first I have to say that, you know, working with Grant Morrison is uh, an honor and a privilege. Um, and, you know, if I can say that not, not every writer has the, has the ability to have a vision and the ability to tell a story visually. And Grant Morrison um, knows how to storyboard and he knows how to, how to draw a story. And so that was very helpful. You can see that in the writing. Uh, but the dream sequence was, uh, you know, written by Grant. And um, I think I pretty much followed uh, what he was doing, what, what he asked for in the script. Um, I think the only thing really that, uh, that was uh, my contribution was, um, Well, the, all of the elements that go into visual storytelling, the choice of angles, the size of the panels. And uh, I know Steve Busolato, who colored it, uh, colored most of it in my studio with me. So the two of us had a very close uh, relationship in terms of the coloring. Um, and it was a wonderful project. I wish and I hope someday to work with Grant again. I, I really enjoyed it. I love his work, you know, even when he's not working with me. But, uh, you know, if I had the chance to work with Grant again, I would do it in, in a minute. Continuiamo con l'altra domanda. Questa volta ce la pone Giulio Belzer. Chiede, la tua lunga com collaborazione con Frank Miller ha influenzato il tuo stile? E secondo te, il tuo lavoro sulle sue matite ha influenzato il suo modo di inchiostrarsi? That's a very interesting question, I have to say. I, um, uh, Frank often tells me the story uh, about how when he was, um, after Daredevil, when he was working on Electra and some stories uh, up at Marvel that he was penciling and inking, um, he tells me that uh, he went to my apartment and we talked about uh, inking and nibs and, you know, ink and how to hold the nib and how to hold the pen. And so um, when he reminds me of that, I do remember it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think Frank is a very much a, a genius, really. And uh, I know that when we get together, we, we were just together last weekend. We spent a couple days together down in Florida. We were doing a signing. And, uh, He has so many ideas and he has, he's, he's constantly thinking about 
uh, another project or another 10 projects, you know, he's, he's always coming up with these amazing ideas and each one is better than the last idea. Um, so I don't think that Frank needs a lot of instruction or, you know, tutoring and whatever, um, uh, tips I had for him, uh, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy to do that. I know that, uh, I introduced him to the pen nib that he still uses today, uh, which I'm, uh, you know, I just, I feel, I feel good about that. Continuiamo adesso con le domande ehm, che ci vengono poste. Questa volta ehm, riguardo un personaggio che abbiamo amato moltissimo, il tuo Punisher. José Magnet di Univer Comics ci chiede Mi piacerebbe qualche aneddoto e qualche ricordo di quando hai inchiostrato il Punitore. E cosa pensa del personaggio e della violenza urbana eh, come è rappresentata adesso nel comics mainstream? It's also a very interesting question. Um, I came to a point uh, when I was doing, and you know, not, I, I not only inked Punisher over, over John Romita Jr., who, who I uh, absolutely love his work, um, but I also penciled and inked the first five issues of the Punisher when he had his own book. And uh, through the years, uh, the Punisher has changed. And uh, one of the uh, 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 moments for me when I realized that the Punisher had changed was uh, I was inking a story that John Romita had penciled. And uh, since I was the inker, I didn't really uh, uh, have the script before uh, I, I started the job. And at the end of the job, the uh, Uh, the character Dakin, which I think is Wolverine's son, um, he cut Von Punisher apart and he cut off his arms, he cut off his legs, he cut off his head and he threw the uh, body parts off the roof of the building. And so the last panel had a shot of uh, Punisher's dismembered body in the alley. And that was the point when I said to myself, okay, that's enough. Um, so I think that the idea of the Punisher is still valuable, um, but I think to some degree, uh, some of the stories have become too violent for me. When I was younger, I didn't think that music or TV or videos or comic books affected children. And I, I changed my opinion about that as I got older. I can see that um, social media, uh, television, film, comic books, they do have an effect on children. And so I would like to be able to produce work that is not uh, steering uh, children or the audience into a direction that I'm uncomfortable with. Um, and I know the Punisher has been, uh, the symbol of the Punisher has been used for um, white supremacy and, 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 and fascists in this country. And of course, I, I have to say that they do not have the right idea of the Punisher. That's not what the Punisher is about. And uh, so I try to, you know, I try to be positive in my work. I try to be uplifting. I try to be, uh, I try to tell stories that are um, healthy. A proposito di inchiostrazione, Thomas Weiss ci chiede, ci sono dei disegnatori che ti piacerebbe inchiostrare? Se sì, quali? Yes, I, I, uh, I keep on uh, uh, bothering Brian Hitch and I think I bother him a little bit too much. I would love to work with Brian Hitch. Um, there's uh, a lot of uh, pencilers that are coming up that I can think of. I would like, you know, James Heron. I don't know if you know James Heron's work. He just did a book called Ultra Mega. Um, I'd love to ink uh, James Heron. Uh, he was a student of mine at the School of Visual Arts. 
and uh, I think he's terrific. I think he's just an amazing storyteller, an amazing penciler, and a lot of fun. So I think about people like Brian or like James, um, and I think at this point, you know, there's so many artists that uh, are inking themselves digitally. Uh, so it's not really uh, as much fun. Well, that, I don't think that's really true. Digital is fun. I find digital um, a, a fun way of working. And I do work digitally also. But uh, I think my preference is probably still paper. Yeah. Grazie. Thank you. Ti abbiamo visto all'opera su Von Fries insieme a Sean Murphy, uno spin-off della serie White Knight. Puoi parlarci di questa collaborazione? We, uh, Sean was uh, living in Brooklyn. I live in Manhattan, so we both live in New York. And uh, we were, you know, as they say, we were hanging out a lot together. Um, And, uh, you know, as, as sometimes happens, uh, we start, you know, artists and writers start thinking about, oh, we should do something together, you know, where you were thinking the same things. And, and I think there is some similarity in Sean's work to mine. You know, it's a little dark, it's a little gritty, it's a little, uh, um, uh, I would say, moody. And uh, so eventually we got to a point um, and Sean and I were, uh, you know, when we were hanging out, we, uh, like a lot of uh, friends that I really like, uh, we would talk about family and we would talk about, you know, our childhood or, or our upbringing and, and, or, you know, gossip about comics or our influences. And uh, we discovered, you know, during the during our hanging out period, that uh, we had a lot in common. And uh, so uh, we decided, you know, that we would try to work together. And this opportunity came up, and I was more than happy, you know, to work with Sean. Um, so we still keep in touch, and we're still friends, which is good. <laughs> You know, not everyone that works together stays friends, but uh, Sean and I are still friends. And it was a, um, it was a great experience. Uh, Sean is a very talented guy uh, and smart. And I like that in people. And ambitious, very ambitious. I like that too. Thank you. Of course. In The Dark Knight Returns, rispetto a Daredevil, un altro personaggio notissimo per noi in Italia, dove il bilanciamento del bianco e nero creava l'atmosfera, il colore gioca un ruolo fondamentale. Come hai regolato la tua inchiostrazione in funzione di questo aspetto? Okay. Um, good question. I... I um... You know, when I was doing Daredevil with Frank um, that last year, um, I was coloring the book. And so uh, the work, uh, the inking and the penciling uh, becomes very different when I color uh, the work. Um, when Lynn uh, was coloring uh, Dark Knight, of course I adjust, not only when uh, Lynn is coloring the book, but when anyone is coloring, i adjust my, my inking uh, to try and match the coloring. Um, so if somebody uh, colors in a very detailed uh, way, like Dean White, uh, Dean White almost paints uh, the, the artwork, I try to uh, be much more simple and, and uh, cleaner. Um, and with Lynn, uh, she uh, doesn't really paint. She kind of uses simple uh, color um, uh, arrangements. And so I was able to put in a little bit more detail. Um, but by the end of Dark Knight, I think that uh, I found the balance, especially in the fourth one, um, the balance between simplicity and texture and a more complicated approach to the inking. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting question because 
I think that civilians, you know, people who don't actually do comic books, um, think sometimes that uh, uh, that producing a comic book is easy or producing a comic book is simple. And, uh, you know, what I would say about that is that it's actually um, very difficult and it's, you know, a lot of thought goes into it. And um, I've always thought that, that producing a good comic is very hard and producing a great comic book is almost impossible. Uh, there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, there's, there's so many people involved. And at any point, um, if one of those people uh, doesn't do their job correctly, it affects the entire comic. Uh, so it's, it's very difficult sometimes, but fun. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, it's still fun. It's a challenge. And, and I think that's why I've, uh, in, I've stayed in comics for as long as I have. It's still interesting to me. Sicuramente, for sure. Thanks. Continuiamo, Klaus. Sure. Hai ricevuto diversi premi come inchiostratore. Le, tue, le storie che hai realizzato sono molto vive e reali, ma non fotorealistiche. Come se il tuo stile punti più a un approccio impressionista, funzionale alla narrazione. Sei d'accordo con questa affermazione? Um, uh, first of all, I agree, I agree with the, 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 the question. I think the question is, is accurate. Um, I think of myself as a cartoonist um, with uh, illustrator tendencies. Um, and I think um, if I can use, you know, Frank uh, as an example, or even uh, John Jr. Uh, Frank is much more of a cartoonist than I am. Uh, Frank is, um, you know, he loves Walt Kelly from Pogo. He loves uh, Calvin and Hobbes, like we all do. And uh, I, I try to add to every penciler something that they're missing so that it becomes something bigger than the penciler and something bigger than me. And uh, I think I've been successful With, with working with Frank in doing that and working with John Romita Jr. Um, I think that Frank um, is, is a, a pure cartoonist and I bring a little bit of illustration to it, a little bit of detail, a little bit. So there's a, there's a bit more balance in the, in the final uh, product. Um, but I do think of myself as a cartoonist and, and, and I'm very proud of, of being a cartoonist. Um, I love, you know, the, the problem with reality based art or realistic, you know, in, in, in quotes art, the problem with that is it does not allow certain uh, techniques or storytelling techniques like exaggeration, distortion, or foreshortening, you know, Kirby is a cartoonist. He's not an illustrator. He, you know, he has a big fist coming at the camera. There's a lot of distortion. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of exaggeration. And realistic artists don't do that. And I don't uh, agree with that. I think that the best kind of storytelling combines everything. So you can, you can be realistic in one panel and then exaggerate and be cartoony in the next panel. And, and there's nothing uh, to be afraid of, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, I, I drew a panel the other day where the, the hand was, it, it looked like, uh, I mean, it was very cartoony and I was trying to figure out should I redraw it and make all the knuckles and make all the fingernails? And I, I thought, no, keep it, keep it because it, it says something that's bigger than reality. And I, I like that a lot. 
Klaus, hai una carriera davvero lunga, lunghissima. All'interno dei tuoi lavori, ad ogni modo, non possiamo non citare due personaggi ricorrenti, Daredevil e Batman. In Daredevil, che ti ha visto coinvolto anche nelle matite, qual è stata l'evoluzione della collaborazione tra te e Frank Miller? Avevate già eh, degli intenti ben chiari nel voler adottare delle atmosfere così noir o è stato un processo più graduale? Daredevil was, um, you know, it was at the beginning uh, of our friendship, my friendship with Frank. So we didn't know each other as well as we do now. Um, but as it turns out, uh, the more time we spent together, the more uh, both of us realized that we have uh, a, lot, a lot of love for the same movies and for film noir and uh, a lot of actors. And, you know, we can, we can quote like a lot of comic book people, we can quote and refer to movies and we know them because we've seen them, the movies 10 times, you know, 15 times and we've studied them. So that's a lot of fun. And, you know, before we even got to know each other, Frank and I connected on that level, on the level of affection for mood and, and tone and, Will Eisner and, and uh, black and white movies from the 40s and the 50s, uh, but we didn't even discuss it. It was just there in our work. And we realized later on, we had so much in common. Um, so I think that um, as, as Frank and I got to know each other better, um, I tried to, um, Uh, contribute uh, more of what we had in common as time went by. Um, you know, and let me say that, that uh, uh, you know, when Frank started on Daredevil, it was very, very tight pencils. It was very, very, very tight. Uh, I think, you know, he was nervous. He wanted to impress everybody. And, and of course, uh, it, 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 uh, he did. Um, And my job at that time was just to, because I was on Daredevil before Frank came on, my job was to keep the characters looking the same. Um, you know, at that time in comics, continuity or consistency was important. Nowadays, it's not as important. But, uh, you know, we had a lot of different artists before Frank, Bob Brown, Gil Kane, Carmine Infantino, Gene Colan, you know, all these guys. And so they all worked in different styles. And my job was to try to keep it look, try to keep Matt Murdock looking the same. Most um, like an editor. Yes, that's right. Yes, a, a visual editor, right? Yeah. Um, or an inking editor. Um, and Frank, you know, I, I want to say just Frank was incredibly generous. He allowed me more room. And as he was getting more work and, and doing other work, uh, he still wanted to keep uh, on doing Daredevil. So eventually I got to pencil and ink and color the book. Um, but it was a process that took about two, three years to finally get to the point where I was penciling the book. And uh, Frank, um, you know, one of the wonderful things about our friendship is that You know, when we work together, we trust each other. You know, he trusts me to do what I do and I trust him to do what he does. And that's a very um, desirable relationship to be in, you know, when, when two people trust each other, uh, especially, you know, working together. It's, it's really, you know, I'm so happy that we are where we are, you know, Frank and I, yeah. Klaus, per favore, raccontaci dei tuoi progetti presenti e futuri se non sono confidenziali e se possiamo vedere qualcosa magari lì per il nostro pubblico. You know, I, I am... Um, I think I'm at the point right now where uh, I, I am not that busy let's say that, use that word, not that busy with mainstream comics, mainstream meaning Marvel and DC. 
um, I'm doing uh, a cover for, uh, I'm making a cover over John Romita, you know, for, DC, uh, for Marvel right now. Um, but most of my attention right now is focused on uh, uh, my creator own project that I do with Pablo Ramundi, which is Sacred Creatures at, at uh, Image. The first volume came out like two or three years ago. We're working on the second volume. Um, I'm working with uh, Brian Michael Bendis on, on creating a, a new uh, creator owned project. Um, I just did a short story with, uh, I'm looking for it. Um, let me see if I can show it to you. I can't show you too much. Um, this is a work in progress. You know, you can't really see it. So it's half inked really. Uh, but this was a story that um, uh, Matt Kint uh, wrote uh, after we discussed, you know, an idea. And we're probably going to do more uh, stories for uh, the new publisher, Bad Idea. Um, so um, I feel like I'm, uh, you know, I want to write some stuff. I feel like I'm, I'm uh, testing to see um, how much creativity I have left. <laughs> we are sure that it's a lot, it's a lot well, of creativity. <laughs> I can only hope. <laughs> we'll find out. You and I will find out together. We'll find out. Okay. Klaus, l'ultima domanda, veloce, 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 perché il tempo a nostra disposizione sta per terminare. In Italia sei davvero veramente molto apprezzato e molto amato. Eh? Qual è il tuo rapporto con la nostra penisola, con il nostro paese? Qual è il tuo rapporto con l'Italia? Yes, I was in Italy. Um, it must have been 19, it was a long time ago now, 1986, I think in January. Um, and I loved it. I, I look forward, we were going to go to uh, Lake uh, Como, the convention in Lake Como last year, but then the pandemic hit, so everything was canceled. Uh, we were all really looking forward to going. Um, and I hope at some point, you know, the invitation will come again. Um, but I've been to Rome, I've been to Florence, which I loved very much. And, and uh, I drove around a little bit up and down the coast. And um, I'm thinking of uh, uh, another artist who lives in uh, Naples. Um, he's always inviting us to come and uh, have some pasta. So uh, I, I, I look forward to visiting Italy again. I really love the country. It's an amazingly beautiful country. Yeah. And the people are, are incredible. Uh, yeah, uh, they really are. Klaus, per oggi il nostro tempo a disposizione finisce qui, da parte di Comics Reporter Fumetto Mania. Grazie per il tuo tempo, per la tua disponibilità. L'Italia ti apprezza davvero molto. Ciao e alla prossima. Grazie, thank, ciao. Thank okay. Really. Our, Thanks so much. Our, our time uh, has uh, finished. Sure. We thank you for, uh, for being with us and we love your work. Thank you. Thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you in person, all of you, both of you. Oh, it will be really good. <laughs> great. See, see. It, okay. it, would be great, it would be great fun for me to do that. So I look forward to it. Thanks so much and good luck, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Ciao, yeah. grazie. Ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.